Family, friends, and former students came together to say goodbye to Beatrice Ferrari today. You're watching Newsday TV. Thanks for joining us. I'm Ken Buffa. St. Killian Roman Catholic Church was packed for the 77-year-old retired social studies teacher. Steve Langford reports on how Ferrari touched so many lives. Funeral mass and stirring tribute to 77-year-old Beatrice Ferrari, whose family and friends honored someone whose daughter is called a most beautiful soul, whose impact will go on and on. How do you begin to put it to words? A life so epic as my mom's. There are no words. St. Killian Church in Farmingdale packed Wednesday morning, not quite a week after the retired social studies teacher and longtime school band chaperone was killed, along with band director Gina Pelletieri, when the charter bus they were traveling in with 40 students crashed down an embankment in Orange County. Monsignor Mark Rowan told the funeral crowd Ferrari, 17 years after retiring from teaching, wouldn't give up that high school, wouldn't give up those kids, he said, adding, she loved too much. She didn't know what retirement meant. The Monsignor recalling how in August of 2022, he renewed Beatrice and Renato Ferrari's wedding vows in this church on their 50th anniversary. something that, that we should be reminded of, that when you give your life away as a teacher, as a member of a community, you only enrich not just yourselves, but, but the world. And so she gives to us a, a lasting legacy. Clergy and friends alike honoring a life of unwavering service. It's so sad that we have to lose her when she was just doing such a wonderful thing for her students and her community. The funeral for Farmingdale High School band director Gina Pelletieri is scheduled for Thursday morning at Our Lady of Lourdes in Massapequa Park. Steve Langford for Newsday TV. And the public got a look at the suspected Gilgo Beach killer for the first time in more than a month. And we found out what he's been doing with his free time behind bars. Sherry Einhorn shows us what happened today in court. Accused Gilgo serial killer Rex Hewerman was in court today sporting a new hairstyle. He told the judge he spends two to three hours a day reviewing the evidence against him. He's doing the best he can. Prosecutors say some of that evidence is DNA from a pizza box allegedly tossed into the trash by the 60-year-old architect that links him to one of the victims. Today we learned DNA from that pizza box is consistent with DNA from a cheek swab from the Massapequa Park man. The surveillance team uh, had uh, observed uh, the pizza box and were uh, confident that that was his DNA, that the, the DNA profile would be consistent with the defendant uh, because he left the, that material inside the box. And so the buccal swab just uh, erases all doubt. Hewerman is facing first and second degree murder charges accused of killing Amber Lynn Costello, Melissa Bartholomew and Megan Waterman. He has pleaded not guilty. Investigators say he's also the prime suspect in the death of a fourth woman, Maureen Brainerd Barnes. During the court proceeding, which lasted less than five minutes, prosecutors also said they handed over 5,000 additional documents to the defense. Defense attorney Michael Brown told news crews there is still a mountain of evidence he hasn't seen yet. There's numerous other suspects that they looked at. I want to see those records. I want to see those notes. I want to see why the police accused other people, were focusing on other people, and what it is about those individuals that caused them to discount those other individuals. There also continues to be a question about whether guns seized from the Hewerman home will be returned to his family or handed over to Nassau police. That could be decided on October 2nd. After that, the next court date is November 15th. In Riverhead, I'm Sherry Einhorn for Newsday TV. Now for the latest on this investigation, go to Newsday.com, click Get More, below the Newsday TV video box. Facial recognition technology is now banned in schools across the state. Education Commissioner Betty Rosa made the decision citing concerns on a school's ability to use the technology without parental consent. Rosa said there's little information on whether the technology can prevent violent incidents. 
and the Brentwood School Superintendent will retire at the end of the week. Richard Loeschner has been in the district for 24 years. Wanda Ortiz Rivera will step in as interim replacement. Brentwood is the largest school district on Long Island. And a traveling replica of the Vietnam Veterans Memorial is coming to Long Island. Now the wall that heals has the names of more than 58,000 soldiers killed in the Vietnam War. The replica is about 375 feet long, not much smaller than the one in Washington, D.C. You can check it out next week at Tenor Park in Copaig. Tractor Supply Co. workers and Riverhead Police came together to corral a runaway horse. Police say a woman fell off her horse and then it ran away. It happened near Fresh Pond Road in Calverton. The rider was okay and a trailer later arrived to take the horse back. All right, let's take a look at your Long Island weather. And you can see we have a much better day than what we've had this week. And tomorrow it's only going to get better. As you can see, we have temps in the mid 60s, clouds overhead, but no rain. Watch Newsday TV on the big screen. Use the remote to activate Siri, Alexa, Roku, or the Google Assistant on your streaming device. Say install Newsday. Newsday TV, covering Long Island like no one else can. A robotic companion is helping some Long Island seniors. Steve Langford has a story you'll see only in Newsday. For John and Susan Hassel, a short walk around their Stewart Manor neighborhood is a welcome daily break from the challenges of life. One day I was at the Alzheimer's Center where he goes three days a week and the woman said to me, would you like a little bird to, for your husband? And I said, oh, that would be cute. And so we walk along and we have him chirping, chirping with us until he gets annoying. Mrs. Hassel says mostly this lifelike character has become something of a companion for her husband and her too. I think he likes it. I think he likes the chirping, the happiness of it. I, I do believe as we walk, he likes to listen to it. The charming little chirper belts out a few tunes, the most recognizable, this one. <laughs> Rockin' Robin was first a hit for Bobby Day back in 1958 when it hit the number two spot on the Billboard Hot 100. The in my day, <laughs> yeah, Rockin' Robin. Yes, we like that. As years go by, music may endure more than most memories as Mrs. Hassel treasured a moment from a church function they attended not long ago. He asked me to dance, and I got up and danced, and they were playing Unchained Melody. And he knew it. He remembered it. And we danced, and uh, it was lovely. In their 80s now, the melody of life itself can prove fleeting. I find music in general is very soothing. I, I, I think it's to anybody who's elderly and has some difficulties. I think music is, is a wonderful tool. Love Birds. Steve Langford for Newsday TV. Now to read more about this story, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. So you think you like the Jets? Well, this Long Island collection has the most gangrene memorabilia in the world. And of course, it's owned by a Long Islander. Jamie Stewart has a story you'll see only in Newsday. From the outside, Jay Pomerantz's house looks fairly normal. But inside, normal takes a slight back seat in this old Westbury home. This Joe Namath piece was originally in the Hall of Fame. Yeah. Now it's here. Now it's here on Long Island. And Joe Namath worn jersey. This is a game worn Joe Namath jersey. This is one of the first sports, or the first sports action figure doll that they ever did. Whether it's a 1968 Jets Super Bowl championship ring or a bathrobe worn by Jets Hall of Famer Don Maynard, Jay's office doubles as a New York Jets museum. 
I had this idea about 30 years ago to just start writing letters to old Jet players to see if they had anything they ever wanted to sell or move. And the first guy who responded was a guy named Larry Grantham, who was a linebacker on the Super Bowl team. My Super Bowl three game-worn helmet, Larry Grantham, number 60. Larry and Jay agreed on a deal, and the obsession began. Jay has thousands of Jets memorabilia. Sure, you've got jerseys, footballs, and autographs, but Jay loves the deep cuts, like the 1968 Super Bowl winning playbook. And you have all the plays that they used all during the year. Jay's collection is so vast, it even impressed his favorite team. It's amazing what he has. And we've even borrowed items from him to display in the facility, to display sometimes on game day if there's a special theme day going on. Jay's my first call. A member of the Jets Fan Hall of Fame, Jay says he's not looking to make money, rather to preserve memories for past and future Jets fans. Would you love to see the Jets one day have their own stadium and have a museum? That would be the dream. For Newsday TV, I'm Jamie Stewart. That's a big fan. Now, to read more exclusive stories like this, go to Newsday.com. Click Get More below the Newsday TV video box. Information about communities is lost if you don't have local reporters. And if there's no one reporting, how do you know what's going on in your community? Newsday, covering Long Island like no one else can. You're watching Newsday TV. I'm Ken Bufa. Thank you so much for joining us. We leave you now with a look at your seven-day forecast.